Hi, this is Bart Polson, and in this video, I want to go over the technical aspects of the uh, piece I created uh, called Three Variations on a Poem Fragment by Sappho. Um, in a previous video, I just gave a demo of what it's like when I run the program, where I click Start, and um, I have a sort of background sounds that are generated and uh, computer voices that read each of three English translations of Sappho's poem. But in this one, I want to explain a little more about the mechanics behind the whole thing. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this uh, patch and I'm going to put it into um, edit mode. And actually, I'm going to take it out of presentation mode. And so there we go. And um, you know, when we do this one, you can see that there's actually a fair amount of stuff going on in the patch and I just want to explain some of this. I'm going to lock it, at least get rid of the grid. Uh, we have the title, we have the uh, poem in Greek, there's our picture of Sappho. I have to use a load bang and a read thing to make sure that, that it shows up when I first load it. These um, panels serve as the backgrounds and a couple of things. We got some text here. Um, and then we have the text from the translations down here. I get, maybe I could just start down here and uh, with variation number one. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Okay, I've got a few things going on here. I have a thing here that actually I use to create a standalone application. Um, the most important part up right here is I have a start button. It's actually a message box. It sends through a bang and it goes to a queue list object. I'm going to double click to open that. And what this is, is a text file that has the timing for all of the events that are going on this, as well as remote sends. So for instance, I have a little comment here, the, the, two, dot, the two dashes are for a comment, I've got variation one. And then uh, I tell it to set general MIDI um, to uh, channel 123 or, or sound number 123, which is the seashore. And so a GM goes to, um, actually GM's going to go way down here in the corner. If I come down to here, here's GM. That's the general mini for receiving. And by default, it loads the uh, grand piano. But I wanted to show you, um, I actually have a U menu here that has the entire list of MIDI sounds on it. It's going from 1 to 128, and that's how we're referring to them. On the other hand, a U menu actually refers to things by an index number starting at 0 to 127, so I have to do this minus 1 thing to get it, so um, the numbers we're using line up with the U menu. Then we unpack to remove the uh, words, just get the, uh, the numbers here, and we send those out. Um, and I think we're still in the grand piano sound. But anyhow, uh, the Q menu has all the triggers and it says first set it to seashore and then play the sound. And what happens there is if I click on this, well actually I haven't triggered the, uh, the change in the MIDI sound. Um, I do that and it will start triggering uh, if I press start, but it's going to run through the entire thing if I do start. Um, it will play the sound. Let me zoom in a little more and say some about that. The first thing that happens is this is the first one to receive a bang. And it comes in here, it turns on the sound, and it goes to the metronome. But I wanted things to, uh, this is going to make seashore, but I don't want things to be so regular because that's not how it is when you're at the beach. And so uh, for the metronome, in, in terms of how many milliseconds it waits before it sends it out, I cycle it back through to get a random number between 0 and 5,000, so that's 0 and 5 seconds, and then I bump it up uh, 2 seconds, so it actually gives me a, a time between 2 and 7 seconds, and that goes into the metronome, which then goes in, uh, sends a bang to pick a random note within a one octave range uh, of what seemed like realistic ocean sounds, um, and we add 48 to get it up to close to middle C, and it makes the note. And so then it goes back through, it gets another bang, and it picks another one, and we're good. 
Uh, right here, the random over here, 30 plus 50, is for the velocity or the volume. And it's keeping it relatively small that it starts at 50 and can go up to 80 on a scale of 0 to 127. Um, but it does make the ocean feel a little more natural because it uh, gives it semi-random start times and semi-random volumes like ocean uh, waves that are closer or farther away. Um, so that's the first thing that happens. It also turns on the LED so you can tell that this one is plain. But the cue list, after five seconds after it starts this, it then sends a bang to this one. Uh, V1, by the way, stands for Variation 1 Speech. This is Variation 1 Audio. Um, that sends, that triggers the play here. Now we've got a load bang which loaded the first of these Sappho recordings. Um, these need a little bit of an explanation. Let me pull in a, a window here. Um, when I uh, create text in these, I'm just going to open this up with um, text edit. This is the actual poetry. I'm going to zoom in a little here. There we go. Here are the actual poems that I have. And what's neat is in Mac it, it can read stuff, so I just highlight it. And I got a little keyboard command here, and I press it, and it will start talking. The moon has set, and the Pleiades. It is the middle of the night, and the hours go by. Anyhow, um, you have choices for a lot of voices. And again, it sounds like a computer, but I thought it'd be a nice little variation on how to do all this. What's interesting is I actually have uh, a little extension in this on services, and I believe this is something that I added that actually I just click on this and it it takes that uh, little selected piece and it saves it straight into iTunes as an AAC file which I can then save as an AIFF which Max is able to read. Anyway, I did that three times uh, changing the voices and system preferences and uh, it worked out nicely. So that's what gets read here. Uh, Sappho 1 is this one. The moon has set and the Pleiades. It goes through to the SF play, the sound file play, then goes to the live gain to control the volume uh, into the Easy DAC. And I actually had to use load bang and start window to make sure that all these uh, Easy DAC, uh, that's the Easy Digital Audio Converter, uh, make sure they were all turned on when um, the patch opened. I'm going to get rid of that. So anyhow, that's the first one. It's triggering ocean sounds. It's giving them semi-random start times and semi-random volumes. And then it triggers, uh, on top of that, the uh, voice. The ocean sounds go for a little bit longer. And then the cue list triggers variation two. Now variation two, I worked a little bit differently. I actually wanted to have music in this one. And so, but I wanted it to be very, very simple and fitting with the mood of the piece. And so what I actually use, because it's a Greek poem, is I use a Greek instrument, a pan flute, and I use a Greek scale. Uh, a, a minor is the Greek Aeolian or sixth mode. And I decided to use D minor because in the movie Spinal Tap they say that D minor is the saddest of all keys. And a descending scale would just emphasize that. And so what I have here is a... Um, uh, what I have here is a scale that just starts at the top and then it goes through uh, gradually. Let me come over here and set this to the pan flute. That's uh, 87, I believe. Uh, 76. There we go. Okay. So now if I come over here and I click on this, it will start playing because the bang's going to come through here. And so what I've done is I've I just it's just a straight descending scale, and the way that we get the notes is through this uh, call, the collection thing. If I double click on that, you see we have the index numbers one through eight, and then the MIDI numbers for the various notes. 62 is D, 60 is C, uh, 58 is uh, B flat. Wait, yes, and uh, so on. It just runs through the scale. And the counter object just cycles through. It goes from the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, which gives us the descending scale because it's using the index numbers. 
Um, I did want to do one thing slightly interesting, and that is I wanted to um, chain, I wanted to randomize the starting time of each one of these. So they go in order, but how long you wait between each one varies. And I do that by coming out of the metro here and going through the random 2000 to 1000. So it's going to be somewhere between one and three seconds. On the other hand, I want to make sure that it starts at the top of the scale each time. So if I stop right there, I want to start at the, at the D at the top. And by clicking up this, um, this one and sending it through this inlet, it makes sure that it starts at the top every time. I also have a sort of a randomization of the volume. Each uh, note lasts four seconds. It goes out, and that's how that one works. I'll turn that off now. It's going to finish playing the last one. There we go. Now I'm going to come over to um, Variation 3, which works a little differently. In Variation 3, um, instead of simply programming what the music would be, I wanted to play it myself. Um, I actually have two music sources in this one. I have a um, I have a MIDI keyboard that I'm using to play um, some Greek scales. In this case, I'm actually using the enharmonic mixolydian scale, which is a just intonation scale, or at least it's not an equal temperament one. Um, and I use the just intonation toolkit. I have a separate video that shows up uh, right after this one about that. As it's an application developed in Max MSP by Tom Mudd, and it's a fabulous resource. And uh, what I did is I opened that up, and I just recorded myself doing some short riffs um, in the enharmonic mixolydian scale, which, um, and saved them as EM1 for enharmonic mixolydian 1, 2, and 3 dot AIF. But what I wanted to have happen is to have Max trigger choose one of these at random. And so what it does is I have to use this little two-part thing where I, where I have sort of a master on switch and a, uh, a minor one. And so when the click comes through, when the bang comes through, it, it goes on this, but it hasn't loaded anything yet. So I'm going to click right here. There we go. And it's going to play that. It's loaded uh, number two. And when that one's done, it's going to come send a bang out this exit and go into this trigger object, which will first turn off this one, which means it'll stop the play temporarily. And it's going to send a bang up here to the randomization trigger. Because what this does is it sends a bang here to select a random number, then it sends the bang over here as the thing to get transferred through the gate. It goes to one of these, but it also sends a one to turn this back on. By going through the gate, though, it makes it so that we have a master switch that can turn the whole thing off. Because this one turns on off and on automatically. But if I want the whole thing to turn off, which is what happens with the cue list, I do that. And this will turn off when it's done. You'll see that it sends a bang, and there we go. Anyhow, I've got uh, those ones, the, uh, the enharmonic mixolydian played on a MIDI zither sound. And on top of it, I've recorded myself playing my little flutophone. Again, here's my flutophone. It normally sounds like this. But you can play it like this. And just, uh, you know, three short riffs, each recorded, and I use the exact same randomization method for that one. So at any given point during Variation 3, you have both the enharmonic zither and you have uh, the flutophone on top of it. About five seconds in, the voice comes. This time it's a, it's a whispery, gravelly voice. And um, that's where the piece ends. And so those are all the technical details of what's going on here. Let me put this one back into presentation mode. And it's very pretty. Thanks for listening.